Let's bring in Thor Halverson, the Chief Executive Officer of the Human Rights Foundation. Great to have you with us tonight. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I want to read something. Um, an 18-year-old who was out marching in the streets is quoted in a Wall Street Journal piece. He says this, I'm marching for my future. Even though we're going to go through hell, the government has to fall. We'll have to make a lot of sacrifices, but we have to open the way forward. Um, it's been a rough few years there for sure, but what comes next for these folks who are taking to the streets? It's a dangerous situation. Well, look, I, I think the context is very important. The, the report that preceded this made this to seem like this was something about Trump and Maduro, when in fact it's, it's a lot more sophisticated than that. Venezuela has now suffered for two decades under Chavismo, mm -hmm. which essentially is, is just a criminal enterprise that has uh, raped the country, looted a trillion dollars from its treasury, and while pretending to have a democracy because they had elections, which were never free and fair, the first one was free and fair, the rest of them were really illegitimate, um, they they, they're trying to turn this into a U.S. versus Venezuela story. But in fact, the, the current situation is not a, a matter of some guy that decided to stand up and declare himself president. Um, there is something called the Lima Group. Uh, the crisis in Venezuela has been brewing for some time. And the nations of Latin America regionally got together in 2017 and realizing that the immigration crisis, because three million Venezuelans and more have been leaving Venezuela, creating a refugee crisis in other countries like Peru, Brazil, Colombia, those nations have been trying to find a peaceful solution uh, that does not involve violence, where there can be a transition back to democracy. And that transition back to democracy is where these nations have now realized that the only way to do that is by recognizing the democratically elected Congress, the National but Assembly, do you and think recognizing it's, its leader. Do you think it's possible to do that peaceably because there's a lot of speculation about the military, whether it continues, it appears to back at this time, Maduro. So how does this transition happen? If it does. Well, the military, the military in Venezuela has been politicized from the start. Hugo Chavez made sure that he corrupted the military, and a lot of the military is in, involved in drug trafficking to the point that many Venezuelan generals are considered drug kingpins by both the European and by the United States and Canadian governments. So the, the military of Venezuela is either going to realize that they're going to be part of the problem or part of the solution. They're either going to recognize the democratically elected National Assembly and the person who is now essentially the interim president, Juan Guaido, or they're going to continue um, to favor Maduro, who is illegitimate. Now, the difference between now and a year ago, or now and three years ago, is that previously European nations and, and democratic actors have known that Maduro is illegitimate. But what they have done differently now is recognize someone as legitimate. Mm -hmm. The levers of power of Venezuela are no longer going to be in the hands of Maduro. This, this is not, I mean, this, this crisis has been going on for more than a decade, and the Chavista has been in power for 20 years. This is not going to be resolved in 48 hours. It's so going to take some time. I want to ask you, we, we have a very quick time, but I want to ask you what you make of when you hear people here in the comfort of the U.S., uh, various leaders, um, praising socialism or embracing it or saying it's what needs to happen here. Well, there's a difference between socialism where someone gets elected and passes a law or changes a few things and then there's courts that can check that or there's another election that can have people remove it and what we had in Venezuela. What we had in Venezuela is to, to quote the, the Hugo Chavez or the, the socialism of the 21st century, which is dictatorial socialism. And if you want to see what dictatorial socialism can do, take a look at the Venezuelan currency. Take a look at Venezuelan's inflation of rate of a million percent. Take a look at... Uh, hunger and famine. If you really want to see what dictatorial socialism can do, look at Venezuela. Yeah, Democratic you... socialism is a little different, and it's why it's a sophisticated discussion that requires a lot more than just sound bites. It sure does. Uh, Thor, thank you very much for weighing in. It's great to hear from you on this. Thank you. Thank you for having me.